Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm just going to give us. Thanks. I'm just going to give us a, a minute to let everyone uh, join in, um, and Elle's going to push the live stream out to the Facebook page for us. So we'll just give it a couple of minutes. How's everyone this morning? Good. Good thing. I'm missing my usual um, croissants and and coffee that we normally get at Creative Mornings. Oh yes. yeah, I can't wait. Nice. Somebody else preparing those. Oh, <laughs> of course you're sorted. <laughs> the pastries are amazing. Always, <laughs> always. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I can see that lots of people are starting to join us. So I would like to start, as always, with an acknowledgement of country. Uh, in my case, that's on the land of the Gaibal and Jarawa people, and I would like to pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging, and to their generations and generations of creatives and entrepreneurs. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this morning. Today's event is a collaboration between Council and Creative Mornings. I'm Phoebe Tully, and I'm your host today. We all want to see a revived and thriving heart for Toowoomba possibly even more after uh, this lockdown period. So today I'm joined by three amazing women who have some ideas about how we can get there. We'll be exploring the role of creatives and entrepreneurs in the city making process. So I'd like to start by introducing our panelists. First of all, we have Anne Witten. Anne is an experienced landscape architect and urban designer at the council here. Anne has worked on projects like the Central Highfields project and building resilience through the regional placemaking program. Anne is responsible for driving the implementation of the Toowoomba City Centre Master Plan. I have to write that down so I can remember it. (laughs) Anne is preparing to formulate a City Centre Action Plan for 2020 to 2030. So she is, not to put her on the spot, the expert on all of these things. (laughs) (laughs) And then I'd like to introduce you to Lauren. Lauren has built two beloved CBD institutions in only a few years, Sweet Talk Coffee and the Hair Salon Cropped. In the face of COVID-19, Lauren, at least what I could see, was one of the first people to really quickly pivot and adapt to the new world order, uh, which meant that she not only retained her community, but she actively built it at the same time, um, which is an extraordinary effort. And then finally, I'd love to introduce you to Anna, not to be confused with Anne. (laughs) Anna is at the forefront of retail in uh, Toowoomba CBD. She's the owner of Ivy Designer Collections, the brains behind the social enterprise Alabaster Doll, and is the co-founder of the Toowoomba Fashion Markets. She builds strong relationships and she's always really entrepreneurial with the resources and community around her, um, which meant that Anna has been able to stay resilient in the face of the challenges of being in retail throughout the last 12 months or so. And then I'm Phoebe Tully, and I'm the host of the Toowoomba chapter of Creative Mornings, which is normally (laughs) an in-person event um, that brings, uh, that celebrates and brings together the creative community in Toowoomba. I'm also the editor of The Field Guide, which is a free guide to what's on in Toowoomba. So a couple of housekeeping things. I personally recommend you watch this on speaker view. Uh, You can toggle back and forth um, at the top of your screen between speaker view and gallery view. I just find that speaker view is a nicer way to watch webinars with a few people, but you can do whatever you'd like. Uh, And then I'd say, could you please use the Q&A to ask questions, not the chat? Uh, It just means that we can monitor the questions as they come in a little bit easier um, and we won't we won't lose your question and this event is also streaming to facebook via the creative mornings page and it will be recorded so it will be sent around afterwards uh, so hello to all of the people who are watching this in the future so <laughs> now i'm going to hand over to anne who's going to introduce this project and has a video for us which i think Elle is going to make happen magically and did you want to talk first or watch the video first? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just say a few words before we um, play the video. So Great. Um, I guess uh, in 2010, Council adopted or developed and adopted a, a city centre master plan. It was developed in partnership with, um, with local um, businesses and interested people who wanted to... Um, see revitalization of the city centre. Um, that's, we're 10 years into that plan. So there's been a, a massive amount of change um, in the last 10 years, and particularly even in the last five years in, in the Toowoomba city centre. And uh, we felt like, well, it's time to you know pause and reflect 
and um, think about what's changed and look at the master plan to see if the things that are remaining in there are, are still relevant. Um, so we did some, we've done some physical place evaluations. Um, we've done a lot of interviews with people who um, have invested in the city centre over the last 10 years. Uh, and now we really want to um, put it out there to the broader community um, and see, what, you know, what are the bold ideas for the next 10 years of the Toowoomba City Centre? Um, so, yeah, I guess as an introduction, we produced this, um, this uh, video which sort of tells, lets the city tell its own story. And while we're waiting, uh, Elle's going to get that video up and running for us. And can you talk about the, what you think of the, as the greatest, the greatest hits of the Toowoomba City Centre in the last 10 years or so? <laughs> Look, it's been an incredible 10 years. We've had floods, we've had droughts, we've had bushfires, we've had all sorts of adversity. And uh, the thing that I really uh, love about the Toowoomba region and the people of the Toowoomba region is their resilience and their innovation. So we've just seen some really beautiful, um, you know, repurposing of our existing buildings, um, people adapting and it just, you know, even in the COVID, you, I've just loved ob observing how people have adapted to the change circumstances. But I think that, um, you, you know, really using our assets and, and building on our assets. The First Coat um, movement was just incredible in terms of changing our urban spaces, mm. um, really opening us up to the beauty of our laneways. The laneways are something that the master plan um, identified as a strength of, yeah. in our urban form. Um, but it's that initiative of individuals who are passionate about Toowoomba that, is I think is the biggest, most exciting thing uh, that's happened. Fantastic. Well, I know we're going to see some more greatest hits in this video. Elle, are you ready to share your screen and, and bring that video to us? As a local, there's something special about looking back and taking a moment to remember how things were. It helps you to have a little perspective, to see just how much we've grown and changed. It all started 10 years ago when the council sought to develop a plan for how our city could grow. In collaboration with local business people, they put forward the City Centre Master Plan as a spark for all of us to have a vision of what's possible. It's become a catalyst to put the wind in the sails of our visionaries, our innovators, our builders and our future makers. With a bird's eye view, you can see we're changing, but down on the streets is where you truly experience the difference. It's easy to think of grand milestones, Wellcamp Airport and the Toowoomba Bypass. But when you look closer, there are incredible things happening right in front of us. With thoughtful use of our spaces, we have vibrant places to connect, to build towards our dreams and to refuel. When a city is thriving, there's room for people to gather, to create and express, and to wrestle with big ideas. Here in Toowoomba, we've always valued life and the opportunity to explore and grow. It's a town where ideas are given rain to become reality. If you have a little energy and passion, you're encouraged to roll up your sleeves and give things a go, where history is preserved and celebrated, while inspiration is given room to breathe new life into dusty corners. Our city's leaders are passionate about helping us all to grow, building a solid partnership with the business community. Together, we're revitalising our city. Council has worked to enable growth through more flexible development opportunities that streamline success. Because what's the beauty of the past without the promise of the future? What will our city look like in years to come? With the Council's master plan, we all get to imagine the city of our dreams. So what's next? Greener city streets? Inner city living? More places to play? Transport choices? future jobs. Looking beyond 2020, what's your vision for the future of our city? 
it's all possible with rich traditions and bold ambitions. Thank you. Ah, oh, I just love Toowoomba so much. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Lauren, I'm going to jump to you and ask what you see as the opportunities for Toowoomba CBD. You own two businesses in the CBD. Um, what do you, what are you excited about at the moment? Um, I love Toowoomba as well, CBD. I think it's really cool. I think going through um, something like what we've just been through as well only makes you realise how much better you ever thought Toowoomba was like the support that the community like you always say that you live in a community and like Toowoomba is such a great community but I don't think and I've always thought that but I don't think I've actually ever truly appreciated it until something like what's just happened um I think the CBD has so much potential in terms of um we're starting to see things pop up the lane ways are just incredible um and there's some really cool things that bring people to Toowoomba, like food and wine and first coat, I think is another great thing. Just to see people walking the streets is so cool, like, and exploring those laneways. I think for the future, like, I would love to keep seeing that, like, foot traffic grow, um, encouraging people to open more CBD businesses to give people, I guess, a reason to keep the foot traffic going and exploring the city I think um inner city living as well is like massive like when I go to places I don't know even just in like Melbourne or something like that it, it, we've got so much character like that like Toowoomba has so much character the buildings are insane like um we've got the laneways and the artwork and things like that and I think if we could encourage people to start living in the city and like popping down and grabbing their coffee and like walking the streets and getting people out of their cars and like being able to walk places with inner city living that would just create a whole um yeah a whole really cool atmosphere and vibe like that's like on top of what we've got now mm. and i i shouldn't assume but i do assume that <laughs> that probably is backed up by your possibly hearing quite a bit of that of people actually walking around the city and making it a great walk I mean I think it is a walkable city but it seems to be more of a um a mindset shift more than anything would that would that reflect your your experiences with the consultation so far uh yes definitely um and the 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 trying to encourage more opportunities for people to live in the city centre, as um, Lauren mentioned, is really high on our list of priorities. Mm -hmm. um, we're currently in the process of developing a, um, a guide to um, converting some of the vacant spaces that are upstairs in our city mm -hmm. buildings into mm -hmm. Um, residential units yeah, cool. probably traditionally they were uh, yeah. they were residences it was quite common you know if you look at even um, the beautiful bank building mm -hmm. on the corner the bank manager lived on the on the first yeah. floor um, where we've got the rooftop bar now that was you know their laundry and their mm -hmm. out, outdoor space yeah. but um, yes so there are a, a number of uh, conversions that have already happened mm -hmm. um, but it's something that we're trying to I guess unpack what the red tape is and what the barriers are for that to happen mm -hmm. um, as soon as you get more people living in town then you get more people out at night and on the weekends particularly so mm -hmm. we our city centre at the moment is is sort of like a nine to five in, I guess mm -hmm. in many ways um, it's interesting in the evenings if you go downtown there's heaps of cars, but you don't see any people. So mm. I'd love to know where they are. That's, a, that's <laughs> something I'm hoping to find out. What are you doing? Um, Please let us know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> where are you, people? <laughs> I think, um, with, yeah, I think one dream I've always had, like having a business in the CBD, is like I was originally in like an older space, which had so much potential like it, the, the building had so much character it was like originally residential um upstairs mm -hmm. and I think of all these cool places and like um people and especially like my demographic who might not want to purchase the house yet like that's not on their game plan you know they want to just like live for the now and not really think too far in the future and 
I think having that in a sitting living would just be so, like so great for them because then it's also like I don't know in my mind it's like eliminating the car troubles that we have as well like I forever hear people saying parking's an issue to me I think like parking is parking we've just got to feel like deal with it like if we need to get somewhere we just need to park that hopefully that would stop um I guess will solve some of those issues because those people might not necessarily they could live in Toowoomba and not have a car which at the moment yeah. isn't possible and um yeah it creates I guess them to be able to have the ability to walk everywhere um and reduce the amount of parking that we need in the CBD mm. um, and just getting that foot traffic, get people seeing what's out there. I think some, so many times I've heard people go, oh, I didn't even know this was here. And, and it's like, mm-hmm. I think that that is because that we're not exploring the city during the day or in the afternoons when we have the opportunities to. And like switching that mindset from like, you have to drive everywhere to like, let's go for, for a walk through like the CBD and have a look what's around. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think that's what's great about events like First Coast. Yes. Uh, and recently at the end of last year, the Sip and Shop event. Yeah. I think more of those uh, on-foot events really help, you know, small businesses in the CBD, people on foot exploring, stopping in, having a look at yeah. different stores and things like that. Um, yeah, it's, I think on-foot events is really helpful. Mm. Well, Anna, that leads um, great into my next question. And I let's say that I'm seeing a couple of things pop up in the Q&A, which is great. We will, we will answer all of those questions. Um, and I'm just seeing a comment from Raquel Pedler saying music festivals. Of course, Raquel, of course. And I know who should be playing. <laughs> um, Anna, what's an example of where you've seen creativity or creative thinking, I suppose, more broadly, having a positive impact on the city centre? Uh, I think being a newcomer, I say newcomer to Toowoomba, but I've been here maybe three, oh, three and a half years. <laughs> um, I was really excited about events like Food and Wine Festival, um, where there was different food uh, and popular bands from Australia, Australia um, that came to Toowoomba, uh, the Garden Carnival and uh, First Code as well, like I think you know, the vacant lots and I saw, I think, like, run-down spaces. It really elevated those spaces and brought people into the CBD. Uh, and even having artists, world-class art by uh, artists like Quinton McGee, that, yeah, it's just incredible. It um, really brings that Melbourne vibe, yeah, to uh, Toowoomba. So, yeah, that was one of the things I really loved about Toowoomba. Mm. And what do you see as the role of creatives and entrepreneurs playing in the city making process? Um, Look, I think uh, they're absolutely essential. And, you know, if you look at um, urban renewal or regeneration in cities, it's often the artists that are the, or the creatives that are the colonizers of, of, um, you know, forgotten spaces. Um, and then, you know, traditionally they sort of get gentrified out and then, you know, they move to other places. But um, I do, if this is a, I would like to mention another part of our um, city making projects that we're doing is we're about to launch into a, um, a project which is called Creative CBD. Um, and it's using the Renew um, Australia um, model for connecting um, owners of vacant shop fronts with emerging creative businesses. Um, It started in Newcastle um, uh, by Marcus Westbury and it's a model that, you know, they have developed um, where they have a process which is a rolling monthly licence and a creative business can get access to a shop a shop front and trial having a bricks and mortar presence uh, mm-hmm. without having you know the, the burden of a two or three year commer- full commercial lease so um that will be where we we've engaged renew uh, we've we've purchased an affiliate membership um and we'll be rolling that out over the next month so all of you creative people out there keep an eye out there'll be an expression of interest uh 
process, which is which uh, which will be um, people will be invited to um, to apply. It, it's really it's a very serious business development process. It's not just a pop up one day, you know, have a bit of fun. This is about really helping to nurture um, new businesses and trying to develop a fantastic relationship between the owner of the shop and and the business so that they get that benefit, you know, the mutual benefits. And so is that with like CBD owned like landlords, they can obviously be a part of that program and then you would see what is available in terms of what business is wanting to open up or whatnot. Yes, that's right. So last year, council ran a number of workshops um, to gauge interest uh, within um, both the uh, property owners and and creative businesses, and we got a really very positive response. There were quite a number of um, uh, pro property owners in Toowoomba who were very interested in the concept. And I guess that's something I'd like to say about investors um, in Toowoomba they generally are locals and they are generally just very committed and passionate about our region. Um, they're putting their hand in their pocket and they're demonstrating on a daily basis their belief in our city. Um, and a lot of them, you know, started small and they can see that, you know, we need to support our emerging uh, entrepreneurs. I think that's a fantastic idea because mm -hmm. I know so many people who might want to go out on their own and if people are listening and want to go out on their own honestly yeah. take advantage of something like that because that's pretty awesome and mm -hmm. I think sometimes like investors might have this really cool space and not really know how to get it out there or an entrepreneur like a business owner might already have in their head oh it's so it's going to be too expensive. Mm. I don't want to sign up for four years. Like I think this is yeah. a great opportunity to break that barrier. Yeah, I think it's the you know the lease the length of the lease as well. Okay, like, so cool. Yeah, if they yeah, go in there cool. and know that they have the opportunity to just like get their confidence, I suppose, to know that it's going to work, and then go, oh hell yeah, I want to stay here for four years. Like mm. I think that's a brilliant opportunity. Yes, and, and the benefit for the owner is also that the property stays on the market. It's still advertised for a commercial um, yeah. you know, tenant. Um, you know, the best outcome is that the, um, the creative business finds that it's successful for them, it works for them, and they eventually can take the commercial lease. Um, so what we've done is we've basically created a new, um, you know, a new entity in the city. Um, if it, you know the understand, it's a deal. So you get the you get the space, but if a commercial tenant comes along, um, you move on to another space. This is a trial. Um, council has just committed some funds to to give it a go, um, and I'm hoping that it's successful and that then we can put a business case for you know for it to be um, a longer term thing. Brilliant. I think that's mm. really, really cool. Yeah. One of the things that excites me most about the Renew project uh, is I suppose there are different versions of success. So one of those is that the, the, the person in that building realizes that they have a financially viable business and they continue on. Yeah. But I also think it's it's actually also a great outcome if they decide that that's not what they want and that that's not the right thing for them in their business because being able to do that with very little risk is an extraordinary opportunity that not a lot of people have. They have to learn um, the hard way whether or not that works in their business model. So I think there's just, there's so much to be gained from these. Um, it's, you're saying that uh, it's a trial period for council, but I think the Renew project kind of offers a trial period to lots of businesses. I think it's really exciting. And also like as an investor, if like that person who's in there, it doesn't work out. There will be someone else next to it going, gee, they've made that space look cool. I want that yeah. space now. Like, mm -hmm. And they might be the long-term tenant. So it's just like, exactly. you might not be able to see past like an empty store, but mm. everyone wants what someone else has got. So <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm just going to pop into the Q&A from the audience. There's a couple of great questions there. Please keep them coming. 
What role do you think new public art, such as murals, play in activating space such as laneways? How do they benefit businesses in the CBD? I might start with you on that, Anne, and then move to Lauren and Anna. So what role yeah. does public art play in getting, you know, the city activated? Yeah. Well, I guess from my perspective, public art is, um, is a way of telling the story of the place, um, of, of um, new, you know, new ways of looking at the city. Um, I love the idea of, you know, the discovery. So the murals are wonderful in that they um, are changing um, and give me a reason to go and have another look of, you know, perhaps what might have, you know, what's happened down there. Um, so, yeah, I guess it's that expression of, of place and the stories of place that I find really interesting about art, uh, public art. Mm. Mm. And Lauren and Anna, as business owners, do you see potential partnerships with artists? Uh, the follow-on question here would, is, and would you like to see more partnerships between businesses and artists in the future? How could that happen? Is that something that you've, you've thought about or explored? Or if, you, or if you could, can I put you on the spot to tell us how it might happen? <laughs> I haven't really even thought of uh, art and businesses like collaborating together. I think having the murals around the CBD, as I touched on before, is getting people out and about in the CBD, in and around the small businesses. Uh, and I also like, I love art and like the first time I came to Toowoomba, I was with my husband and we are pointing out all the murals like, oh my gosh, look at that. And you associate that feeling of like feeling good and excitement around that and you connect that to Toowoomba. So it's, yeah, I, um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't really um, mm. talked about it before, but I think it does definitely have a positive impact for the mm. small Mm. I've just seen a comment from Annalise who says that it's a great way to promote the city via people who put the street art on social media. Uh, so that would be a, a great thing for a business, I suppose, to have to have public art so close to their to their business and, and be promoted that way. One thing with um, sweet talk, like there's the big blue um, mm. mural there, it's like massive and blue, it's like the spot. It's like yeah. Yeah, it's the amount of people that get a photo in front of that is insane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they're posting it and then they're tagging Toowoomba. And colour is vibrant and you want colour in the city. Colour, like, I love colour. Colour makes mm -hmm. things look happy and fun and, yeah. Yeah. We were, when we were doing some pop-up in the Bell Street Mall a couple of years ago, we actually had a bridal party come through the mall to have their wedding photos in front of the, the monkey mural in Bank Lane. Mm. Um, I thought it was incredible. And we were doing hula hooping with, I mean, people were hula hooping at the time. So then they also did wedding photos with the hula hooping, and <laughs> with their hula hoops. So I, I think it's that, that the delight of discovery is, um, is something that we can really capitalise in our city because we have so many creative people. I did want to also mention that there, the city centre master plan um, includes a public art strategy, which you can have a look at. It's on council's website and it talks about all the different functions that public art can have. So it can help with wayfinding. It can, you know, identify that you're, um, at a gateway, it can tell a story, it can do so many different things. And um, if you want to have a look at the strategy, it's, it's quite a nice um, piece of work that can spark a few ideas. And mm. please share any ideas you have with us on our on Council's Your Say page um, because we will be developing a new action plan for the city centre for the next 10 years. And these are the things that we can put, you know, in black and white and then council can think about how do they um, facilitate those things to happen. Thanks, Anne. And um, Elle, hopefully we'll drop a link into the 
um, the chat there to take you to that Your Say page so you can get involved in that. Now, I have lots of my own questions, but I'm trying not to be selfish uh, because there's some great ones coming through the Q&A. Jess says, I've spoken with a few residents who love the idea of a mall with no roads along Margaret Street with the potential for green spaces, markets, fairs, music, etc." She's wondering what business owners think about that. So Lauren and Anna, have you, have you been involved in those conversations? I, I, yeah. I'm sure we all hear this. Yeah, I actually have uh, to kind of create like a Queen Street Mall type setup in Toowoomba. Uh, and then that would also create, you know, if people had some business idea but didn't have, you know, bricks and mortar right, like set up, they could just do the pop up for the day. And yeah, and that way you could have multiple stores. Yeah, and yeah, I think it would create a lot more buzz around the CBD, definitely. Mm. I know Townsville has their monthly, I think their night markets that happen every couple of months in the, in the city centre. And could you talk a little bit about the placemaking framework that you're working on? And I feel like this might tie in this conversation. Uh, yeah, so um, Council's sort of been uh, exploring opportunities for, for placemaking and building that into their business as usual, uh, you know, over the last couple of years. Um, one of the, sometimes, sometimes it's regulatory things that limit uh, these lovely ideas. So, um, and it's not council. Um, we have such strong uh, laws around public safety um, and particularly when it comes to roads, uh, we have to have all these traffic management plans and so on, and they can be quite expensive. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that, like an interesting approach that Brisbane's taken is in James Street, they've uh, installed some bollards that can just, you know, you unlock them and they come up out of the, of the road, basically. Um, so you can safely close the street without all the expense of having to have people standing there with signs and barriers and temporary bumping and dump out and everything. So I, I think that that's, uh, you know, the placemaking framework is looking at how can we actually make things easier um, for people to, to, to do different things with our streets. Um, yeah, so I guess I think that roads are, you know, largely unused space that we could populate with lots of other activities. But we just have to work out how to do that safely and also cheaply I suppose. Mm. So I think that depends as well like it's a great idea and I would be totally all for it but we've got to fill the spaces that we do have in the CBD now before we go taking away the roads like it's yeah. such a fantastic idea but if we compare it to Queen Street Mall or anything like that every shop in Queen Street Mall is full and so I think our main priority should be filling those empty spaces first. Yes. Getting that foot traffic and proving to whoever we have to prove it to that we can get the foot traffic on the street and that the foot traffic's there so that before we have to invest all of that money into blocking the roads off without even knowing if people will show up, mm -hmm. we like let's use the CBD and what we've got mm -hmm. and show up now and use the footpaths and fill the spaces that we've got and then venture onto the roads like once we have this buzz of, of vibrancy and people walking everywhere before mm. we, yeah mm. yeah I always say through both uh, Create and Mornings and the Field Guide that communities don't act, sort of just pop up accidentally. They do take nurturing and building and actively going, okay, well, we want more of this, so we need to support what's here. Um, it's kind of a chicken and egg sort of situation. Um, if we mm. wait until we have this, you know, these vibrant markets put on for us, oh, then we might fill the, the city centre. But mm. we need to play a more active role in making sure that the, I mean, we as in, as individual citizens. There's a couple of questions popping up about the good shed, um, about how that could be used to almost, you know, act as an incubator or, you know, how great it is as a potential venue for markets or those sorts of things. And can you tell us a little bit about the, the good shed and, and what the vision is for that building? Is that part of your purview? Um. Well, it is, it is in the city centre master plan and it's in the railway precinct. Um, 
I think it was um, it was a situation where the shed was either going to have to be demolished because it was um, you know deteriorating, um, or some money had to be invested into it. Um, and council decided that it was a valuable um, piece of our history and potentially a really useful space. So um, with the help of the state government, it's been restored to, to um, a, you know, a, a state that it can be used. Um, I don't think there is a fixed view about what the future of that, of that building will be. I'd be. I would love to hear what people's thoughts are. Um, it's a fabulous space. It's a great exhibition space. Um, but it is just a shed at the moment. Um, and I guess what we, we need to do collectively as a community is think about how do we want to be able to use that? So before um, anyone invests more money into it, we, you know, what, what is the future for the building? I'd love to, I'd love to hear everyone's thoughts. Mm, please pop any ideas into the chat. We'd love to. We'd love to hear them. Um, this is probably a good time, Anna. You are the co-founder of the Toowoomba Fashion Markets. Can you? I think it's important here to hear about how that actually came to life and what you needed to do in order to make that happen. Could you run us through how that came to be? Yeah, sure. So uh, my friend Lily Peak and I. Uh, we found we wanted to do kind of like a wardrobe clear out of our own wardrobe. So I was looking into, oh, maybe having pre-love doing a sale at Ivy, using the Ivy shop space to do something like that. And then Lily mentioned, oh, we could get other people involved who also want to sell their belongings like they're pre-loved. Uh, and then, yeah, I could, as time went on, we realised a lot of our friends on socials were wanting to sell their items using socials like Instagram and Facebook to sell their pre-loved. So we kept stewing on the idea and thought, okay, maybe we could create our own market because there's markets on the weekends, but it's more like farmers' markets and yeah, so then we thought, oh, there's a courtyard outside of Sweet Talk. So if we have the market there, people can also get their coffee and breakfast and make it like a day of it. So I asked Lauren, and of course she was on board, thought it was a great idea. Uh, and we asked the landlord of the Longs Quarter and he was more than happy to cooperate. So then we had our first Toowoomba Fashion Market. Uh, we just made an Instagram page. We were so overwhelmed with how many people wanted a stall. So we actually, the first event, we also had it on the following weekend because we were just inundated with stall holders. Uh, yeah, and then so it, we just got such a great response and not only was it bringing... Uh, like the community into you know vacant space not only were we use, utilizing a vacant spot but it was also bringing the community together as well uh, yeah so we pre-covid we were holding them once every three months and yeah post-covid yeah we just wait and see when <laughs> <laughs> when restrictions. TBC. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I feel like everything's like that at the moment. People keep asking when Creative Mornings is coming back. Uh, I can't really give you a specific date, unfortunately. Yeah, um, yeah there's a lot of we'll just have to wait and see. Um, mm -hmm. Jennifer Wright Summers emailed in a great question. Um, I think she's also, I think I've seen her name here. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, her question was about... Um, creators being involved early in the planning development so their ideas can be considered intellectual property valued and sufficient time allocated to their work. And could you speak to how the placemaking framework is going to build on, on that idea as well? Uh, yes. So um, we currently uh, have a, a policy and a procedure around public art and um, each project has um, a public art reference group formed uh, and that the intention of that is to start to consider the inter integration of art 
into every built outcome that council, you know, uh, where it's relevant, um, where council invests money. Um, I don't, I would love to think about how we could also build that perhaps into our planning scheme so that um, the planning scheme is the mechanism that council has to influence built outcomes by um, private investors. Um, I know over, over the years, the state government has had, you know, different schemes whereby you have to put a percentage of your build cost into, um, into integrated art, but it hasn't always been successful. Um, any thoughts that people have around um, how we could do that? Council is, you know, launching into developing a new uh, planning scheme over the next couple of years. Um, so... Uh, I think, yes, council can do it better, definitely. Um, but there is a mechanism and we, we have been um, trying to make sure that that happens early in, in the planning process for projects. Mm. I think there's a um, there's lots of amazing ideas. I've just seen that um, Jennifer has written a comment about the use of the good shed. She said community conversations around issues important to the community could be held in the good shed. We could generate ideas, tell our stories of resilience, and in the course of it, develop public art, uh, which is a beautiful idea and beautiful use of that space. But I guess I want to reiterate that now is the time to have these conversations and to, to add your input. Um, and your ideas, especially through that your say link that Elle has put into the chat, um, that council is really, really listening and, and building this plan at the moment. So if you've got ideas, please, please put them out there. We are, we're doing good on time, which is great. Lauren, you own two businesses in the CBD. What keeps you coming back to having a central location in town? What opportunities do you think come from, from that specifically? From having my businesses in Yeah, from being in the city centre. Um, I think that if there's anywhere that's going to grow in Toowoomba, it's in the CBD, like, so that's inevitable. And I think that in the last even five years that I've been down here, like, originally when I first opened Cropped, I actually thought maybe I won't go, like, dead centre. Um, it was just probably more financially feasible for me to build my business, maybe just on the outskirts. I was on Russell Street. But, um, and we're more of a destination. And in that five years, like, um, I've become really close with a lot of CBD business owners. And then when the Longs Quarter got developed, it was just, the, it's the coolest spot. I, like, love it. And <laughs> it's such a great thing for Toowoomba. It's like, yeah, just a little hub. And I just think that the whole of the CBD is like that. I would walk across the road and say hello to Anna. And then, you know, you, like... I love going to Ground Up or Banter and like going seeing those coffee shops and I don't know, it was just, it, as a business owner, like it was a community in itself being mm -hmm. a business owner in the CBD, which mm -hmm. made you feel like you were supported. So you definitely, I feel like if I was on the outskirts, I probably wouldn't have got that. It's like, it's a social outing coming to work every day. <laughs> you know, like, That's amazing. Other, and we all talk to each other and everyone waves to each other and like, I think that that's like crucial when you're a business owner is like knowing that you've got support from other business owners. And I feel like that is definitely um, one of the biggest things that's got me continuing to come back in the CBD. And also people, some people say they don't like going to business center, but most people do. And like, let's face it, like where else are we going to go and talk about everything's in the CBD? Mm -hmm. Mm, there are definitely pockets around the around the city, but I I mean I love going into the city. I'm a full you know five minutes drive from it, um, but I I do. I'll park the car and I'll I, you sort of get a whole lot done because everything is so close, um, and that's what I mean. That I think we forget that this is a beautiful walking city. Um, yeah. That if you park your car, you can go and do a few things in the city. Everything mm. here and everything will continue to grow here because there's just so many benefits to being in the CBD. I mean, Grand Central in itself is massive. Like, mm. I think that's just brought a whole new, yeah, just a whole new thing to talk about. Like, it's encouraging people to park, like, to come to the CBD. Yeah. And mm. it's encouraging people. I feel like the people I've spoken to aren't only going to Grand Central, they're going to everywhere around Grand Central too. Mm. So that has changed the CBD 
drastically and I mm. think for the better. Mm. It's definitely a tight knit community. I don't think I would be able to be doing what I'm doing without the support of the community. It was, yeah, one of the things I noticed was everyone is so willing to help each other out, especially, yeah, especially other businesses to help each other. It's, yeah, I just love pulling them up. <laughs> <laughs> That's so nice to hear because I think there are, um, you know, a few different stories about um, retail in the city at the moment. And I find it um, really encouraging that you are so positive about it. And you have, um, I know you have great ambitions of, of what you would like to see in the city, but um, that you have a really positive experience there at the moment as well. Mm. Um, we've had a, we've had more of a comment than a question, but um creating quality green spaces that encourage people to linger in the city centre, for example, to eat lunch, meet their friends for a quick coffee, have an ice cream with the family. Most of the city seating so far is linear along footpaths and feels more like waiting than lingering spaces. And could you speak a little bit about what you're hearing, uh, I suppose the trends that you're hearing in the community consultation so far? I ask because I assume that green space is something that comes up a lot. Yeah. Um, well, you know, it's early days, so um, but we have had quite a lot of people um, on the on the Your Say page. There's a tab where you can just post your ideas. You can put pictures, um, videos, or whatever you want of, of great places that you've been. Um, and yes, that is a really valid point. Is that um, we don't have a lot of um, lingering places in our in our city and they're really important they're the sticky places where you know people um pause have a look around i think um our bell street mall is probably uh, would be a lovely opportunity to make a really beautiful green space um in you know providing some lungs in the city um We've got the Civic Precinct and mm. um, the Art Gallery Park, which are really well, really well used. Um, and I guess in the master plan, uh, the Margaret Street was envisaged as a green spine. So that was um, intended to kind of, I guess, connect Queen's Park through, right through to effectively Laurel Bank Park with lovely green spaces to hang out and meet. Um, the challenge there is uh, it, would, it would mean removing the, a lot of parking, um, but uh, that is one of the projects that's in the master plan that hasn't happened. Um, and uh, in the Your Say page, there's a tab which is um, uh, called Future Projects, and you, it's one of the projects that we're asking people whether they think it's still relevant and whether they think... Um, it, it's still important for the city. So that will help us to sort of reprioritise the, the ideas that are in the plan currently uh, to say, well, you know, actually people don't think that's important anymore. So we, we might drop that off and, and try something else. Mm. I would like to add on to that. At Sweet Talk, we have um, a courtyard, like in the Longs Quarter, that isn't yet leased. The amount of people that just honestly want to sit there on the grass in the sun is, even in winter, because it, it gets like a really nice morning sun, is there is people doing that all the time. And I feel like if we were to have that inner city living as well, we want people to come down and maybe get mm. their coffee or their food or go for a shop and then sit downstairs, you know, like yeah. in those yeah. spaces. I think it's a beautiful idea because right now people might just be not wanting to dine in. Um so much at cafes or yeah. just they might just duck to a shop and duck back yeah. but if there's somewhere yeah if, I think that's a brilliant idea and I think it would be so well used just from having a small courtyard out the front of mm. the cafe and the hair salon I've just noticed how many people use it and it's actually the nicest thing looking out the door of your business and there's people there's like yeah. kids playing and like family yeah. talking it is that's what makes you feel like you're living in a community. Mm -hmm. I'm finding uh, since moving to the Oaks Hotel retail precinct, being uh, our shop entry on Kongsang Walk, I'm starting to feel that as well. People sitting out in the walkway, mm -hmm. um, reading a book or waiting for, the, um, now that we're neighbours with Coke, I'll get people waiting on haircuts or, yeah, it's... Um, 
I'm noticing people just using that space just to take their time and, yeah, have a moment for themselves. Mm. 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 I'm going to change tack a little bit here. There's a question from David O'Shea around waste management in the CBD. Um, He's asking what businesses are considering bin storage and presentation impacts aesthetics, particularly in laneways, if more residential will be included, what are you looking for in resource recovery and waste reduction? That's an interesting question, David. Um, and do you have, do you have anything to add on that? You, you might not. <laughs> um, yeah, it's part of life, isn't it? Um, I think, I don't, I'm not an expert on waste uh, management, but I do think that, you know, everything, everything uh, can be designed to be functional and to be, um, you know, not uh, unattractive. Um, I think we've tended to use the laneways as, yeah, dumping grounds and, and just sewers or whatever I mean, traditionally they probably were where the night cart came through um, but as the function changes the form changes and that's you know the importance of really good design and careful thought about how uh, how the all of these elements come together mm. Thank you, Anne. I realise that waste management is not your um, area in council, but um, I'd say I thought it was an interesting, an interesting point about yeah. all of the things, that the less glamorous things we need to think about when we're talking about markets and, and all of the rest yeah. of it is that those, those functions will also be um, highly affected. Yeah, so, absolutely. And, uh, you know, there's all the things that, that's the beauty of, of I mean, and the challenge of urban design is, you know, you need to be able to get an ambulance or a fire engine or you need to have the right volume of water. You, you um, people want cars. I mean, even if you live in the inner city, you may want to go on a holiday to Surat and you need a car to do that. So these, this, is, this is what I find really exciting about urban places is how do we make them beautiful and also function to what people need? Mm. Mm. Uh, Michelle's just dropped here that uh, in Florence they have a common disposal area where bins enable people to bring their rubbish and recycling from their units to the common collection point. There is no door-to-door -door collection service there. Um, yeah. So and I feel a bit spoiled. <laughs> my brother lives in Switzerland and the cost of waste disposal there is astronomical. So mm. they have a tiny little uh, rubbish bag um, and they basically recycle, they have worm farms, they do whatever. They don't bring packaging home. Um, there's, the stores have to provide um, places for, for the packaging to go because mm. the residents just manage it themselves to keep it really minimal. So I think it's our whole attitude to, you know, consumerism, I guess, is, is mm. part of uh, what we need to think about as well. Mm. Thank you, everyone. I am. I think we've probably got time for one more question. And Raman in the USA, thank you for joining us, Raman from the USA, um, is asking about the impact that we're expecting COVID will have on the long-term consuming behaviour of local residents. And I might start with you on that as the owner of a clothing boutique. I feel like you possibly have some, some insights there about um, consumer behaviour. Yeah, it's, oh, it's a tricky one. I feel... Um, because we have been isolated the last couple of months, there's no events on. I think people haven't been shopping as much and disposable income isn't as disposable. I think people have been more in the mind frame of, oh, do I really need this? Do I, you know, this and that? But it's, yeah, it's, I think once events and things kick, like start happening again, I think, people will be spend, spending but being more conscious of what they're buying and, you know, if they buy a dress, where, like how many times, where can I wear this, how can I change the look of this, get as many wears as they can. It's versatility type. Mm. Yeah. I think I agree with Anna. Like, I just think if you're a business owner in these times or you have a product that people buy and you're relying on a consumer to buy it, I think you need to show as a business owner why your consumer, like why they need it. 
like mm -hmm. why do they need that dress well they can style that dress 20 different ways so you might buy that dress but you're going to get 20 different outfits out of it you know like mm -hmm. it's just about like knowing your purpose as a business owner and what you're providing to your consumer and sticking with that strong to show people that there's a purpose to your product and that yeah. you're buying smarter and yeah. rather than just and showing people that they can still do that with the product that you're selling mm. Mm. and did you want to add anything to that otherwise i have another question for you uh no i think that was a lovely answer <laughs> yeah yeah being more intentional and thoughtful that's for sure um mm. I think what will be our final question then is how can we open Toowoomba up to a more international and interstate tourists? We are a hidden gem. I would absolutely agree that we are a bit of a hidden gem and our city is full of other hidden gems. Mm -hmm. um, wh what about, um, I mean, I think we've had a very heavy focus on being a local in this conversation, which I think was important, but um, could we briefly touch on um, how we get non-locals to enjoy our city centre? Are uh, you asking me? Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Um, well, look, you know, uh, my husband and I have a business as well, and uh, we actually find word of mouth uh, one of the biggest um, ways that we get new customers. And I think it's about all of us who are here sharing you know, our experiences and telling people about what's going on. And, um, and you know, I mean, First Coat was, I keep mentioning that, but it was amazing in terms of the international reach that that festival got. And people were coming to Toowoomba just to see the murals. So what we need to really um, tell the positive stories about our place and, mm -hmm. um, and not be afraid to, to I guess, blow our own trumpet a bit about mm. what we're doing. Um, the, the, the point of the little video that we played at the start, the, the reason we did that was we thought, well, well, one, does anyone even know we've got a city centre master plan? And two, um, does anyone know that a lot of the wonderful things that have happened, whilst they're not, they haven't been physically delivered by council they have been influenced by the plan and the strategies and the and the concepts um, that are embedded in it um, and uh, I think you know we we could become known as a place of of excellent design excellence and and innovation and and um, new new thinking and ideas so um, I'm I'm not a tourism expert, but I think it's about us telling our stories and getting them out there however we can. I agree. I think things like Instagram now, are like we have some friends in Brisbane who have heard of um, Sweet Talk in Twomba, and that's only because you'll see our table and you might Snapchat your brekkie and you've Instagram story it and you've got friends on the Gold Coast in Sydney and then they're seeing it. Like I think but essentially the easiest and most cost-effective, like it's essentially free for someone to just share their experience. That's going to get the biggest reach and cost businesses mm -hmm. and people zero dollars to do. Just yeah. sharing. Yeah. Social media, like Instagram is, yeah, one of the tools we, like Ivy relies on to share not only with our community, but all of Australia and internationally as well. Mm. Thank mm. you everyone so much for your thoughts and insights and, and putting up with me throwing questions at you for an hour on a Friday morning. Um, really appreciate it. And thank you everyone for tuning in. We've had a great audience today and we've had great uh, interaction in the, in the comments and the questions. I just want to finally wrap up by saying, please get involved at, that, you, at the Your Say link. Uh, that's where you can share all of the ideas that we have discussed in full today. Um, but this is really just a jumping off point. We're just trying to get the conversation going. Um, and we all want to hear your ideas. So Elle has put the link in the chat. Please follow that. Um, and we look forward to maybe having more conversations as, as we progress. But thank you to Anne, Lauren and Anna and to Elle for facilitating the chat and, and helping us all come together. So thank you everyone. I hope you have a great Friday. Thank you. Bye everyone. Thank you.